Kirsty and Charlie. And Charlie's three and a half months old. And she's working on transitioning Charlie to arms out of his ergo pouch at the moment. And she's got success with one arm out, but two seems to be too hard. He soothes himself with his hands, but this keeps him awake. Tonight I had to hold his hands away from his mouth for him to drift off. Then he had a massive startle, which luckily didn't upset him. Today we tried for an hour and he just wouldn't fall asleep. He napped for nearly two hours this morning, luckily, but only one arm out. Anyway, was hoping on Tuesday you might be able to give me some tips to help with the transition. Is it okay to hold his arms and hands? Great question, Kirsty, and a really common problem. Now, when you swaddle, that becomes a sleep association. So it's like patting, rocking, not as bad as, but it is a sleep association. So if you leave it past four months, that swaddle will, will create a big problem, okay? Um, I had a baby at seven months old, still swaddled, and this baby, I had to actually put socks on this baby's hands because he freaked when he found bare hands, he couldn't really handle it at all. So a swaddle will, will create a problem, so you do have to wean off it. I'm glad you've taken one arm out. How about you just keep the arm out for a week and get him used to it? Be taking the right or the left out? Has he got a preference? That's, I'm just a little bit curious about that. Um, now, something else that you can do, Kirsty, as well, is if he's really struggling, you can always put him on his tummy to calm him down. When you put a baby on their tummy, they find their hands really, really easily. Now, you can't leave him there to sleep, obviously, because of the SIDS stuff, but you could put him on his tummy to get him off to sleep. Just a thought, all right? Because... That would sort out this startle. Another idea is to put him in his cot with both his hands out. I know, both. Take the swaddle away completely, okay? And you put his hands up like this, but put a, sh a sheet at shoulder height, okay? So the hands are like this, okay? Because when your hands are like this, see what I'm, what I'm doing here? So a really tight sheet. So if you think about in hospital or sleep school, they have really thick cotton sheets that have obviously been starched or whatever. You want something like that, something that's really firm, okay? Things that are stretchy are not that great because they manage to get out of these things. It needs to be a, a, an, actual, an actual sheet, okay? And another option is to swaddle him, but to have the swaddle round, like a muslin swaddle, the bottom bit, th this arm's here, so he can't get his shoulders, his, sorry, his shoulders, his elbows out, so his hands are here, okay? That would really help as well, Kirsty. So in England, we never swaddled, but we tucked babies in at shoulder height. Now, nowadays, we don't tend to tuck babies in with sheets or blankets or anything, and I know it's hot in Australia at the moment, um, but we can use fans on them and use a cotton sheet because that cotton sheet will create security. If you don't have that cotton sheet there and you're taking the swaddle out, there's no security there. Hello, Danielle. <laughs> Beck, Beck, Jane. May have taken a sheet from sleep school. So you could even use, you know, a single sheet um, Egyptian cotton. Not sure what sort of thread goes. <laughs> But, you know, there must be cot sheets out there that are thick. There must be, okay? I'm not sure where you get them from, but there's got to be. It's like, where does sleep school get them from? Where does the hospital get them from? But that's the sort of sheet that you want, okay? Because stretchy doesn't do it, okay? The stretchy wraps just don't do it. Muslin doesn't do it because... And you've got to tuck it right underneath your mattress. Really important. Um, but that works because it gives that security, okay? So in England, never had a startle problem, never had issues with, with settling babies because we did it early. But we put babies with, with, a, with a sheet up here. We don't do it over here. So I've got a blog about Miss, I think it was um, Abby. And um, mum had just put her in a sleeping bag at about three, four months of age. And she felt really insecure, okay? And I said to her, I said, and she said, what? I said, why have you not tucked her in? And she said, but it looks really pretty, Karen does my sleeping bag. Like, Alicia is not is not a bit into, into pretty, so I was a bit, okay. 
And I said, but what about how she feels? Now, have you heard of weighted blankets for kids with ADHD? Is it possible I'd have cotton wrap more than 24 hours sleep school? There is a wrap by, by four little ducks, I think it is, um, that's 150 centimetres. But you need something that fits right underneath your mattress that that baby cannot get out of, okay? That's like the swaddle but isn't, all right? Maybe I should do a line of Egyptian cotton sheets that are like sleep schools. That'd be a great idea, wouldn't it? I'll tell Steve. Steve is watching, my GM. Steve, can you get onto this, please, and just find where we get cotton sheets from that are a really good thread count that would fit in a child's cot um, that we could sell in our shop. My partner Steve, he's amazing at doing this sort of stuff. If I tell Steve to do something, it's done like yesterday. <laughs> it's really dangerous to tell Steve to do stuff. Um, so Steve, just saying that all the people out there, business venture, new range, I think so. You know, Egyptian cotton. That'd be very nice, Steve. Babies need a little bit of luxury, I think. And um, hopefully we will find it at some bargain prices. I don't know where we'll get it from at bargain prices, but let's have a go. Spotlight single sheets, 450 thread count. That would do, Danielle. Um, you know, a single sheet from a child's bed. That would do it, okay? You just need to be able to get it right underneath that mattress. That's the important thing. But it needs to be a really thick sheet that's just got no give that you can get underneath that mattress. That's the important thing. Because once you've got that security, right, so I'm going to go back to the weighted blanket, sorry, yeah. I got <laughs> diverted by spotlight and sheets. So when you've got, there's a thing called the weighted blanket for kids with ADHD and autism. When you have weight on you, you have security, okay? So when you're in the cot in a swaddle or a sleeping bag, you've got no security, all right? So you take the arm out, there's no wonder that they, that they freak. So if we just took them in at shoulder height with a very firm sheet, that would do it, okay? But if you're really struggling, like I say, put him on his tummy for a bit till he learns to suck his, his hands, then turn him back over, okay? Um, it would take just one or two sessions to sort this out, Kirsty. I know it's hard, you've got to just work your way through this, but I think that would fix the problem, okay? So if I was doing a visit and I saw a kid with a really bad startle reflex and I had to undo, that's what I'd do. Um, all right, Steve, so are you on to it, Steve? Just want to know. So I hope that's helped you, Kirsty, and given you a heap of ideas. Because um, we need to give we need to give that security, and that's the key with this. Um, and I think you'll fix this and let me know how you go. So let me wave my new wand. <laughs> would you like to see the new wand? I'm not sure that Steve would like to see the new wand. This is, this is one that um, apparently it's going to sort my chakras out. So maybe I need a bit of chakra sorting out after all my work I've been doing this year. So here's the new one.